not a woman of culture and knowing the, the intricate differences between punk and goth, you're a bit immature. Like, no one's wearing that to work. Your pyjamas. I think you, people might think you're insane and be a bit nervous. Also, I'm wearing probably like the least fashionable jumper for this video. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Yvette and I moved to the UK in May last year and I'm documenting my time here and my adventures. So first things first, I'm actually filming this one in the evening, so I'm testing out my new light. So sorry if the lighting looks weird, hopefully it looks better, or at least you can see me, <laughs> it's the main thing. So one of the big learning curves I had when I moved to London was learning how to dress like a Londoner and fit in and not look like a massive tourist, because that's what I don't want. So there was a few things that I learnt and I thought would be helpful to know if you're moving here. Um, also, I would love this to be a two-way conversation and because there's a few things I still struggle with, so if you are from the UK, um, you can share those with me. But first things with London fashion is pretty much anything goes as a, as a statement. Um, if you're trying, they kind of like that and mismatch things go. So like you'll see people with tutus and t-shirts and leather jackets and do you know what I mean? Like everything, you know, all sorts of odd things. But the odd thing with London is that, well, the thing with the UK, I guess, is that I'm, what I'm not used to is seasons. Um, so it changes a lot depending on the time of year, what you should be wearing. So this is now January, so I've seen the winter fashion, the summer fashion, the spring fashion, the autumn fashion, all that kind of stuff. So I think I can give you a good guide of what would be generally pretty good to, you know, fade into the background. Generally European things, um, generally European fashion is more fitted or has a fitted look about it. Australia, it's hot all the time, so it's a lot of like as little clothes as you can or at least loose so it doesn't cling to you. Very much the opposite. Um, Daniel, I think, wears shorts like nine times out of ten for the entire year in Australia, so wearing trousers was like more of a learning curve for him, things like that. Fitted things, so blazers, trench coats, coats, shoulder pads, lots of buttons, um, pants in, um, sorry, trousers. Trousers and jeans are generally a bit more tighter than they would be, say, um, in other countries. Um, everyone tends to look neat and put together. Uh, one thing I had to learn since moving was that a lot of my clothes were just not built for the cold because it doesn't really get cold in Australia. So I've had to pretty much purchase a winter wardrobe. Not even, like all I have is a few jumpers. Also I'm wearing probably like the least fashionable jumper for this video. So maybe you won't listen to me, but I promise you when I try, I can look okay sometimes. Not today though, because I'm sitting down chatting to you casually in my living room. So I want to be comfy. Jumpers. I had and I brought those um, and I've got some more since I moved here, mostly Christmas ones. And I had to buy coats, the big overcoats. They're amazing. I find them being the biggest difference. Um, I had this big white jacket, which you'll have seen if you've seen my Finnish videos. I bought that in China and that's for like zero to like minus 20 temperature. I wear that and I don't really need it all that much in London. Like even at night, I just pop on a coat with a jumper or just a coat by itself is enough. So the clothing here seems to be built a bit better. All I ever had in Australia was um, like jackets, but they weren't, you know, well made, I guess. I don't know, not thick. They were like more for aesthetic rather than warmth. We're here, everything is warmth and you get really big long scarves and you can fashion them. And I got this thing for Daniel, which is a snood. So he doesn't like scarves because they fall out and it's too much for him. He's not a fashionista. But a snood is basically like one of those like, you often see them construction sites, tradies have them, where you put them for like dust, but this one's like more thicky, thick and woolly. So it's like um, more like a scarf, but a circle around you. And so he can pull it up or have it down. And it's like a scarf without all the hassle, which he's been loving that. Um, earmuffs are very cute. Like there's so much winter fashion I wasn't aware of and that's been so fun. The other thing with the seasons, I mentioned changes. Um, I would say in the winter, it's a lot of dull colors, you know, grays, blacks, browns, maybe the occasional splash of like a mustard yellow, but generally not very colorful. But then once you come to spring, it's like colors everywhere. And that's where all the fun fashion comes out. Skirts, long skirts, silk skirts with t-shirts um, and all sorts of like, a lot of the, uh, what do you call it, the fashion revolution from the 80s started in London. So that's why there's a lot of like, whatever you do, as long as you are trying or like being a bit um, conscious with your choice, they'll like respect it. Whereas if you just turned up in like your pajamas, I think you, people might think you're insane and be a bit nervous. I would anyway. Uh, so generally 
The only things I would recommend not wearing um, in London would be joggers, so track pants. Generally, there is, so this is where it gets a bit confusing because obviously London's quite big and very diverse and like where are you trying to like fit in? I will say American fashion of like the brands and the track suits and all that stuff is bleeding over into like teen culture. But as an adult woman and adult man, Daniel, um, you wouldn't wear like a tracksuit. That's very much like a youth thing, in my opinion, or if you're not a youth, I think it's like, you're a bit immature. Like no one's wearing that to work, you know what I mean? So generally tracksuits, joggers, that stuff, not really. Slogan t-shirts are not a thing and not even with the youth. Um, so, you know, like FBI body inspector and all that gross t-shirts or like if you're a university and it's like Oxford or wherever, like no one really wears slogan stuff, um, very rarely. It's either, sometimes there'll be branded stuff, there'll be the, the you know, designer brand, but a lot of the stuff will just be no label, but like high quality and you can tell it's high quality. And the other major thing is shoes. So you would not wear trainers or, or sneakers or runners or whatever you call them. Um, even though logistically you're like, I'm walking a lot, I should be wearing walking shoes. Um, no. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone that wasn't a tourist wearing I've been wearing boots basically every single day in winter. Um, I only have one pair, so I just keep reusing that one because that's what's acceptable. Or you wear ballet flats, or in summer I will wear like Vans or like um, Converse kind of um, trainers. So they're a bit more like stylish rather than like, you know, Nike or whatever it is. So they're okay, and a lot of people will wear, you know, um, a van or a converse with like a skirt or a nice dress or whatever um, to make it a bit more versatile so you can walk around because no one in London wears strappy high heels like you only do that if you're like getting out of the taxi and into <laughs> the restaurant like you're not walking on the tube with those shoes you get stuck in the escalator so a lot of the times with London fashion um, you won't go home between work and going out so you have to make your outfit work so you have to kind of think of what you're doing at night and make your outfit adjust for that as well. So um, that's why layers are always really good. Also, it gets very hot and cold very frequently, no matter what time of year, I say layers, because <laughs> you'll be like, oh, the sun's out, it's nice and warm. And then you get into a shady patch and you're like, I'm cold now. <laughs> so never leave home without a jacket. Also in winter, you're like, it's so cold. But then as soon as you get inside a building, it's hot and you need to strip off. So layers every time. I would say it's very rare to see a British gentleman without a collar on. So I say that um, if you're going to the theatre, you definitely need button up and a collar. Um, if you're, even if you're going to like a barbecue, I would say it's pretty common for guys to wear a t-shirt and then an open button up on top. So like still a bit nice. Um, and that's like they're casual. Like it's very rare to wear just a t-shirt out. But they like to dress up. They like to be tailored or have the tailored look about them. The one thing I struggle the most with, with dressing for London, because I don't normally wear long pants or jeans or trousers, whatever, <laughs> um, back in Australia, because it doesn't get that cold. I only have like three pairs of trousers. Um, so I have blue jeans, white jeans, and black jeans, and I rotate those through the winter. And I know like trousers, like more like fitted, you know, with the, um, with the seam and everything, fitted pants are quite nice or patterned pants. Um, but I have so much trouble like finding a pair that look nice and fashionable, but not like corporate. And I struggle with that. So if you have any recommendations or tips on how to like get nice trousers that aren't like looking like I'm going to work in an office, that'd be amazing. Cause all I seem to wear in winter is literally the same pair of jeans in every photo. <laughs> like it's either I'm in my leggings when I'm like around the house or I'm in jeans. <laughs> and I would love other options just to mix it up a bit. Shorts, um, it's hot, like very rare for British people to wear shorts. It has to be very hot. Um, oh, and if you're coming in the summer, the tube is so hot, you'll, that's once again layers every time. The whole, this whole video could have been 10 seconds of saying layers, <laughs> but layers are like to make it a bit more fashionable too. Like if you wanted to go for that, like grunge rock, but like girly look, you'd do like a tutu and a t-shirt and then a leather jacket and then some vans. And like, that's a look. Um, even if you went like all denim, like double denim, triple denim, no one cares. London's a very, um, welcoming to pretty much any fashion and that's kind of one of the best parts of it is that you get to see all sorts of interesting things like if you go to camden you'll see all the punks walking around um even if you go on the tube and you go past camden station you'll see 
like proper goth punks <laughs> like they're probably different i'm not i'm not a woman of culture and knowing the, the intricate differences between punk and goth but you know the aesthetic um you see them walking around as well but then you could go to like sloan square and see like people in suits that cost more than my entire I was gonna say house, I don't have a house. It costs more than me, basically. <laughs> These like beautiful tailored suits that don't even have a label on it. If you hear any like that's not my mic, that's the dog walking around on the on the hardwood floors. But in general, I'd say you can get away with pretty much anything. So if you're coming to London and you've got some weird outfit or weird combination that you're dying to try, I'd say try it out while you're here because it's probably one of the best places because no one's gonna judge you, judge you. So I know if you wore some of the outfits I suggested in Australia, you would get looks because Australians dress down so much. Like it's G, it's t-shirt and shorts every day. Loose shorts, like cargo shorts, like I don't like cargo shorts. So like not fitted, all loose, um, and like a pair of flip flops and that's it. Like you don't dress nice. Also the op shops here are so good. So secondhand vintage shopping. I think it's because the places, the city is so old um, and people donate clothes here and they're a bit more well made at least i found the when i shop secondhand in australia the clothes are always like quite cheaply made like fast fashion where the clothes here in the op shops are really good like i was looking for coats to get daniel one because rather than paying a lot for another coat we thought we'll you know save the environment a little bit shop secondhand and you can get some really good quality coats that for like 20 pounds and it would have been like a 500 700 dollar coat good stuff like shopping here is so good and you find some really interesting pieces um, that you wouldn't normally because like I said, it's more of a fashionable area. So when they donate their clothes, very interesting finds. So it's a cool place if you're a fashionista, unlike me who can't even figure out what trousers to put on and just wears blue jeans because I'm scared. <laughs> um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments, how do I buy trousers without looking like a nonce? And remember to hit subscribe so I can see you next time and you ring the bell so you don't miss so you, and if you want, you can ring the bell and get notified when I put up a video because sometimes subscribe doesn't work, but it's up to you. No pressure. Thanks. Bye.